Man, oh man, is it hot. It's about four in the afternoon. And it's just about too hot to do anything. I'm just wringing wet. And uh, I was going to trim shrubs. And I thought instead I'd start this 1962 Impala. Two-door sports coupe that I have by the name of Whitey. I haven't started it in months. Let's see how quick it starts. Okay, I disconnected the battery. And I'm making sure I got a good battery connection. It's been months. But it's always pr been pretty quick to start once it gets fuel to the carburetor. Come on, buddy. I love this car. You might not think of it. You might not think that I do, but I actually do. This is one of my favorite vehicles, one of the prettiest vehicles, in my opinion, that I've ever seen, one of anyway. I love this car. Uh, this is a one family owned car, if you didn't know. Well, you don't, I did. I've got a lot of new subscribers since, since I started this car last. It's always been in my family, and I've had this car probably since 1984, so what is that, 30, I've had it 30, 38 years? I'm on my third marriage, so it's been through, <laughs> well, two wives, including the one I have now, Mrs. P.I.B., best one I've ever had this thing sure is dusty even sitting in the garage in a carport I'll let it run for just a minute then I'm going to get it out of here before the carbon monoxide detectors go off here in the garage maybe I can ease it out real quick this might be a long video so if you're in a hurry you might want to move on to another video from somebody else or something I don't know Whew, man it's hot I love summertime though I'd rather have this as wintertime anytime okay I hate sitting in here sweating but there's not much any time of the day that I can not get out and not be sweating I'm gonna I'm gonna let it run for a few minutes I got to get a couple of things out of the garage and this happened to be in the way it's not in the way I'm glad to get it out but uh, it needs to run I, I don't drive this car much because I got a transmission leak and uh, I'm, I'm waiting for my friend Brian, he's on YouTube. His name is GM1038. Maybe this late this fall or this winter or something, I can get him to address the excuse me to address a transmission leak I have. It's a 283. With, it's all original. 283 is original to the car, and so is the Power Glide transmission. It's a two-speed Power Glide, and uh, it's a good running old car. This thing probably has a zillion miles on it. I'm going to tell you the story real quick. I wasn't going to tell you, but I've had some people say they enjoy hearing the story. So here it goes. Like I said, it, this might be a long video. If you don't want to watch it, I understand. Uh, I first seen this car. This car is from North Alabama up on Sand Mountain. And this, uh, I was at my grandparents on my mom's side had a farm, a 60 acre farm. And uh, they were, they didn't have, well, they didn't have no money, but they had a farm and that's, they grew their own food, raised their own hogs, raised their own, you know, milk cow, you know, everything. They done everything there on the farm. And uh, they didn't have no money. They didn't have a uh, stuff that you would, stuff that you and I would probably consider 
uh, you know, normal in a house, they didn't have. They had one fireplace and they bought coal to heat the house. And uh, they didn't have any indoor plumbing. They had, they finally got some plumbing for the kitchen sink. But they didn't have a toilet or a shower or anything. I remember as a kid going out there, get a big old wash tub, and get some water out of the well and get a bath in the, in the wash tub. You know, all of us kids did when we went to go visit and you know, hey, they'd say, hey, it's your turn, get in the tubs. <laughs> Those were good times. And you know what, we did, it's a, uh, I never did think of them as being poor. I mean, that might sound crazy to y'all, but I just, they weren't poor to me. To me, they were rich, fun to be around, good hearted and the kind of people that they would give you the shirt off their back if they thought you needed it. I mean, they were, they didn't hold back nothing. Uh, just, I mean, salt of the earth type people. They worked hard every day, had a garden. I mean, they, they grew a cotton and I mean this, anyway, how first time I seen this car, I was five years old and I was playing in the front yard in the sand with my cars, little toy cars in the sand. And my uncle bought this car brand new, 1962. He bought it on uh, on top of Sand Mountain, like I said, and uh, I you could see a car coming for like a three quarters of a mile, you know, coming coming around the curve and coming. And I was playing cars, and you could hear things, you know, pretty good out in the country. And seen this car coming down the road, and uh, you know, I quit playing cars and I stood up on my feet and I thought, man, that's a beautiful car. And uh, I didn't know my uncle had bought the car. And uh, he pulled into my grandmother's uh, driveway there, parked it in the grass, and uh, he was filling out insurance papers. He was a insurance salesman, had the clipboard up there and he was writing stuff on it. And I run up to him, run, run around the car, run up to him there while he was writing. And I said, Uncle Arnold, that's his name. Uncle Arnold's what I called him. I said, this is the prettiest car I've ever seen in my life. And uh, of course, you know, I'm five years old, but like I said, I've always liked cars and trucks. And uh, I said, would you save this car for me, Uncle Arnold? I want to buy it when I get older. I said, would you save it for me? He just kept on writing on his notebook, you know, insurance stuff. You know, he traveled all the around the southeast of the country, Georgia, Mississippi, everywhere selling Life of Georgia Insurance. You might've heard of it. And, uh, he said, yeah, I just, you know, he just kept on writing. I'm five years old. I probably wouldn't pay no attention to me either if I was him. But I, did, I didn't know it at the time. But my grandmother had come out the front door and, you know, the, the screen door didn't have AC or nothing. If you was hot, you put the windows up on the house. And uh, she was standing behind me. And I was so involved in looking at this car, I didn't even know she was standing behind me. And I said, uh... That's when I asked him would he would he save this car for me, and uh, my my grandmother heard me say that, and so when my uncle got ready for a new car, uh, get ready to trade it in, she bought the car from him, and I'm telling you, this car's got a zillion miles on it, it's been everywhere, uh, but fortunately it's never been wrecked. This is all the original panels on the car. And in 1984, uh, I did not, I thought my grandmother just bought the car. She used the car. My grandmother was the only one that could drive. My grandfather did not drive. He, he drove mules and I mean, he just, they didn't have a tractor or nothing. I'm telling you these, I mean, looking back now, it about makes me cry. Whew. Man, it's hard for me to tell this story. Now I get it. I'm sorry if I get emotional, I apologize. These people were poor. But uh, my grandmother, I'm sure she had to go to the bank and borrow money, but she bought this car. And this is the only car they had for years and years and years. And uh, this thing's been used as a truck. You know, anything you can imagine, this car's done it. 
And uh, sorry, I got emotional, guys. Anyway, about 1984, my grandmother called me. Of course, I live here in East Tennessee. And she said, uh, she said, son, she said, son, I'm, uh, she said, do you want this car? She had it in the garage and she was driving a 73 Impala at the time. And, uh, really uptown, you know, and, uh, I said, yes, ma'am. I said, I've always loved that car. That 62 Impala. She said, what's out here in the garage? And she said, I had people stopping in wanting to buy this car. But she said, she said, I remember you said that you wanted this car. And she said, I saved it for you. Golly, guys, I'm sorry. Let me change the topic a minute. I, I splatter pattered the trunk. This is all junk, you know, wind, windshield visors and stuff like that in here. Thanks for listening to me, by the way. So I told my grandmother, I said, uh, I called her Granny. And my grandfather, I called him Grand Jay. And uh, I said, Granny, I said, let me buy the car from you. I said, I said, uh, I said, I'd like to buy the car. She said, if you want it, she said, come get it. So I said, well, I'll come if I can buy it. She said, come on. So I worked that whole week. I, I worked in a factory welding. And uh, loaded up one Friday after work. Took off for North Alabama here from East Tennessee. Got over there and... Uh, I'm making this story as short as I can, guys. I'm sorry. I'm long-winded. I got this thing. Checked all the fluids. Checked all the tires and everything. Everything appeared to be in good shape. You know, I brought extra oil. Just, you know, everything. I'm not a mechanic, but I brought everything I thought might possibly go wrong with the car. And, uh, you know, I, I knew when I left that... I knew when I left that Sunday morning to come back home, you know, once I got on the interstate, I was pretty much on my own, and I'm not a mechanic. So I checked everything out, and I kept telling her, I said, Granny, uh, please, please let me pay you for the car. Tell me what you want for it. And I said, I'll get you the money. I'll, I'll pay you for the car. She wouldn't, uh, she wouldn't take any money. I tried and tried and tried. She would not take any money. She finally said, because I wouldn't hush, she said, give me a dollar. So I gave her a dollar. And uh, I've had the car ever since. Ever since. Since I've had the car, I've lowered it and put these wheels on it there. Somebody will ask me. They are, uh, oh, let's see, 245-4017s. The back ones are 18s. I know that, but I don't know what size. 275-35-18s. Let me check the temperature on this thing. We good. It needs to run. Anyway, I've lowered it. Oh, I never have had no money to speak of especially when I had this car but I done some trading around with a guy in Florida on eBay he had a 62 Impala he had traded for and uh, the car didn't sell on eBay and I told him I said if you don't sell the car I said would you sell all the new parts the seat covers and stuff so he contacted me and I, I, I forgot how much money I gave him for the seat covers the door panels and stuff if you've ever bought parts for a 62 Impala let me tell you what, they are high. They are very, very high. And uh, this is not original to the car. It's supposed to have a blue insert. But like I said, I never have had no money to do stuff like this. 
But uh, since I've had the car, I've had a new headliner put in, package tray, new carpet. I put a 59 Impala steering wheel on it because that's my favorite steering wheel. I still have the original. Still has the original radio in it. Of course, I got gauges. It doesn't. It's got idiot lights. I don't trust idiot lights. I like gauges. Uh, my grandmother put this in here for next oil change thing. I don't know if you can see that or not. The sun's so bright, guys. I can't hardly see myself, especially looking at a white car. But uh, I've had new dual exhaust put on it. It was a 283 single exhaust. I've had dual exhaust put on it. It's quiet. I put 327 emblems on it because a 283 just has the V with the red, white, and blue. But I like these cross flags, so I put them on it. Nothing that you can't change back in five minutes. Bought new emblems. These are very expensive. 283, I've had it rebuilt. It was had a lot of blow by. The old car was wore out when I got it. Wore slap out. I'm telling you, this car's got the miles on it. Uh, put power brakes on it. It already came with power steering. I got this car, uh, took it to Tim Dixon's last summer, and uh, he's put all new power steering hoses on it, new belts, ATI distributor, uh, done the front end, done the rear end, you know, new bushings and everything. It, it looks like an old car. Well, it is an old car, but it's not. I mean, it's got a bunch of new parts on it. Got a four barrel carb on it. It had run, uh, one, excuse me, one rust hole that I had fixed. I know I've told y'all this before, my longtime subscribers, but uh, I guess it had a heater core leaking and my grandfather who sat here, he didn't notice it. You know, when you got floor mats, you don't notice if something's wet. Had a hole, not a big hole, just a small hole. Had, had it fixed. But like I said, this is all the original panels on the car. Uh, I don't never get it out in the rain and I'm very, very particular about who I even get to work on it. Very particular. So, uh, like I said, I had Tim Dixon at Gas X Chop Shop. I trust him. He's my friend. He's my very good friend. I had him work on this car and uh, Tim is Tim was real picky with it and I'm proud to call him my friend. I mean, he done me right. And, uh, he done a bunch of work on this car, had it up on the lift and done things that nobody else would have done. I'm waiting on GM1038 on YouTube. Check out his channel, would you? GM1038 on YouTube. He, uh, I'm going to see if he'll fix the transmission. I got a transmission leak. That's what's kind of holding me up. The transmission shifts great, but I don't want to mess up this power glide transmission if it was to run out of fluid and me not know it. So, uh, but Tim Dixon is on Facebook. Just type in Gas Axe Chop Shop. Axe is spelled A-X-E. Gas Axe Chop Shop. 10 Mile, Tennessee. You'll see a bunch of my stuff and a bunch of everybody else's stuff. Tim's very good at what he does. Otherwise, I wouldn't. I, I hang around people that are truthful people, that are honest people. I don't hang around. I, I have accidentally run across people that were not what I call honest. I don't hang around them anymore. When you've been done wrong while well, I don't go back so these folks that I'm mentioning are really good folks uh, anyway I've had the car repainted once the original colors blue insert with white the way it was born there's no rust in the car these are just primered marks and the guy that I was going to get to detail the engine he doesn't do that anymore so I'm going to I was wanting him to detail the engine, but it just it just didn't work out. Maybe I'll find someone else. But there, there's no rust in the car. It's just all patina style, I guess, what you'd want to call it. But original windshield, everything. Oh, I did put this mirror on. This is the correct one with the bow tie embossed in the... All this stuff, guys, is expensive. Parts for these cars are expensive, and uh, I'm like I said, I'm really particular about who I get to do anything on this old car. I'm trying to keep an eye on, make sure it's like I said, it's hot out here. It's what is it about 180, 
180, 185. Uh, anyway, I, I'm, I can't believe I can't believe the Lord has let me have this. And uh, I know I don't pay no attention to it most of the time. I truly don't. I, I don't. I just, I don't know why, but I just don't have time to do anything. I'm retired and still, some, it's funny, but somebody asked me yesterday, do you enjoy all your time off from retirement? Yeah, I've got time off, but there's other things, you know, that I don't really discuss on YouTube that, have taken its place and my wife and I both stay extremely busy so not just with cars and trucks but other things going on life uh, let's just say that life life goes on uh, anyway I know this video is quite long and I apologize and I appreciate y'all listening to me and I'm I apologize for getting emotional I've got everything I, I believe I still have everything for this car to put it back original. You might notice that glove box is from a 61. 61s and 62s shared the same dash. But 61s had that. I, it's aluminum. I call everything chrome, but it's aluminum. I hope you can see where I'm talking about. It's so bright out here. I can't see, but I just put that on. But I have the original glove box door. But this has been a really good car, and I'm proud I'm proud to still be able to say it's here in my family. I've put the bumper guards on it, on the back, and I put the grill guard here on the front. It didn't come like, it didn't come that way. All this car was born with was a power steering, factory power steering. That's the grill guard. That's from a 61 with a grill guard. So, uh, 61s look better to me than a 62. 62 just look plain Jane, kind of. But I just like the bow tie that a 61 had when they had a grill guard on their car. So, anyway, I, I'm just proud I still have it. The Lord is, I've had to sell a lot of things in my life because of, well, I'll just tell you, just because of uh, divorces. I've, I've started all over three times. You know, uh, you know, start out all over. I bought more uh, washing machines and dryers and <laughs> than a most an average person would buy. But uh, anyway, I'm I'm in a good spot in my life now. I finally have a a wife that is good to me, and I'm good to her, and and uh, I'm really blessed. Been married to this to Mrs. Pib for 28 years, and it's been a it's been a joy. And a feeling that I've always wanted to have in my life, but, but was unable to because of, uh, you know, stuff going on that I didn't know nothing about. I'm always the last to know. But uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. I know I talk a lot, and I apologize, and I'm, I cannot get this car out without getting emotional. I started to do the video and not even say anything. Just walk around the car and let you look, because whenever I start talking about my grandparents, and what they went through in order for me to get this, uh, you know, I, I get really emotional. If you knew those folks, you would absolutely love them. I mean, go fishing, have a big fish fry, make hush puppies, you know, just sit out, get, grab all the chairs, what few there was from the kitchen table, sit out in the yard and, and talk about fishing stories or, just, you know, just, you couldn't help but love them. I mean, they're just... And of course they've passed away and uh, I miss them very much. So uh, anyway, I'll close the video. I, I get emotional and I apologize. Like I said, you're watching Primer is Best. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. Let me know. Oh, I named this car Whitey because I used to go gather eggs with my grandmother. And uh, she had a pet chicken. That thing wouldn't, it was just a big old pet. And we'd gather eggs from that that chicken every day she named it whitey because obviously it was white and uh i thought in honor of that chicken i know it sounds crazy i'm i'm a nut but it's in honor of that chicken and it is my grandmother's it's my grandmother's favorite chicken she named it whitey so i named the car whitey too 
I know that sounds weird, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just weird. Maybe I am. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. You're watching Primer is Best. If you'd like to subscribe, I, I think I done said that. I'm on Instagram, though. Primer is Best. Facebook, Primer is Best. And uh, I have a second YouTube channel called Man on a Budget. I'm also Instagram, Man on a Budget 1. So uh, let me know what you think about this old car, Whitey. Uh, I want to thank, thank Tim Dixon at Gas X Chop Shop for getting this car in such good shape. There was a lot of wore out parts on this thing this time last year. And uh, Tim kept it for a pretty good while. I mean, a short time, but I mean, he worked on it every day. And I've probably got a couple of videos on it. But uh, th this, other than the transmission leak, I really can't think of anything else wrong with it. Other than it needs to be drove. So, uh, once again, thanks for watching. Big old shout out to Tim Dixon. Gas Axe Chop Shop. And I uh, want to thank my friend GM1038. That's Brian for all the things that he does for me too. They're both really good people. And I trust them with anything that I have. And it's hard to find good friends. Hard to find a good friend. Hard to find a good wife sometimes. And a uh, third time's a charm for me. So, God bless y'all. Thanks for watching. I hope to catch you in the next video. And I'm, I hope your ears ain't bleeding from me talking so much. I'll catch y'all in the next one, okay? God bless you. May the Lord watch over you and keep you safe. See y'all later.